This is going to be the next episode of God's Game of Thrones. This is going to be King Ahaziah. And here's a brief description of him. He's Israel's eighth king. He's spiritually evil. His spiritual condition is evil. His parents are Ahab and Jezebel. The prophets that go against him and that preach while he's reigning is Elijah. And that's who you're going to see in this study today is Elijah. The verses you'll see him in is 1 Kings 22, 48 through 53, 2 Kings 1, 1 through 18, and 2 Chronicles 20, 30 through 35. So first, let's look at 1 Kings 22, 51 through 53. It says, Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel and Samaria the seventeenth year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned two years over Israel. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. See, that evil spiritual condition that he's got. And walked in the way of his father, Ahab, was his father. One of the most wicked kings, if not the most wicked king. And in the way of his mother. So he didn't just walk in the way of his father, Ahab, but in the way of his mother, Jezebel. A woman that nobody wants to name their daughter after today. And if that's your name, you might want to get it changed or be a really good woman and turn it into a good name. And in the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. You remember Jeroboam, the guy that keeps getting mentioned in almost every episode of this series? He was that first king we talked about, Israel's first king. He made a false religion and everything just to combat the true pure religion you know he was intimidated that they were going to go back to worshiping the lord so he made up a false religion he would be one of those people that talks about in the book of revelation who makes a lie that maketh a lie he made a lie he made it his own false religion so this guy he walked in the way of jeroboam the son of nebat who made israel to sin for he served baal and worshiped him and provoked to anger the Lord God of Israel, according to all that his father had done. So this guy, Ahaziah, he should have learned from the mistakes of his mother and his father, and from the mistakes of Jeroboam, and from the, the mistakes of all these wicked kings that came before him. But I want to title this, How to Learn from a Bad Father, which would be Ahab. You see, there's some things that you learn from your father. But if your father is no good, if he's a sinner, if he never, if he's just a, just consumed with the world and sin and is lost, you may not be able to learn anything from him when it comes to what you should do. But you can learn from a bad father by learning what you shouldn't do. If I can't learn something from somebody on what I should do, then I immediately pick up on things that I shouldn't do. So this is going to be how to learn from a bad father. In 2 Kings 1-1, one, one, we're going to be in 2 Kings chapter 1 now. It says, Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. So Ahab is dead, and Ahaziah should have learned some things from watching his father. Number one, he should have learned that pride goeth before destruction. In 2 Kings 1-2 it says, And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. Beelzebub. He wants to go inquire of this god that can't see, hear, or walk. A God that if you called on him, uh, he's not going to answer. If Ahaziah learned anything, he should have learned that Ahab's pride went before his destruction. He should have learned that. He should have learned that proverb. In Proverbs 16, 18, pride goeth before destruction and in haughty spirit before a fall. Ahaziah just had a fall, literally. 
and he then falls sick. Ahab was constantly getting chin-checked by the Lord, but he had too much pride to soften his neck a little bit and turn to the Lord. Even if you have a bad father that won't show you how to live, you can watch his life and learn how not to live. I mean, if Ahab's your father, you can look at all the things that he did and, and be like, that didn't work out for him, that didn't work out for him, this didn't work out for him. I think I'm going to go the other way. I think I'm going to follow a, somebody else's life, model my life after somebody else. I mean, I look at the things my father did, and I don't model my life after the things my father did. I learned what not to do. I learned that drinking alcohol gets you in a mess. I learned that hitting your wife and doing all these other things is going to lead to a divorce. I learned that uh, not watching after your own kids leads to your kids growing up and not having a father, not knowing how to live life and do a lot of things because of the absence of the father. I didn't learn a lot of what to do from him. I actually didn't learn anything of what to do from him, but I certainly learned what not to do. And maybe you're listening to this and you had a father that wasn't around or was a bad father. You can look at his life and learn what not to do. Ahaziah should have learned that pride goeth before destruction. Number two, Ahaziah should have learned that he should cry out to the right God. But in verse two there, it says, He sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron whether I shall recover of this disease. Now, I'm sure Ahaziah knew about the prophets of Baal and their epic battle versus God and Elijah. The Lord whipped their tail. I mean, we just did a lesson on that. And Ahab never turned away from Baal. He never turned away from the false prophets. He still would uh, call on the false prophets, like when, when Jehoshaphat joined affinity with Ahab, and he's like, Let's let's uh, see if we can get a prophet to to let's inquire of a prophet about what we're about to do. You know, remember that. And Ahab goes after the false prophets. Still, even after they got their tail whipped, and you saw where that got him. The lying spirit in the mouth of those same prophets is what led to the death of Ahab in battle. Yet. Look at what his son Ahaziah is going to do. You see, most times the kids don't learn from your mistakes. So if you're going around doing stupid stuff in front of your kids, drinking, watching filthy stuff, doing drugs, popping pills, doing stupid stuff, most kids aren't going to be like, well, it made their life miserable, so I'm going to do the right thing. No, they're going to do just like you're doing. Most people don't learn from the mistakes of their fathers, just like Ahaziah. Ahaziah should have learned from the idiocy of his father seeking false gods, and he should have called on the name of the Lord. I guarantee you the Lord would have, would have heard him and healed him. And this would have been a different chapter here. Second Kings 1 Kings 1.3, it says, But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, Go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and say unto them, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? <clears throat> the angel of the Lord here, a pre-appearance of Jesus Christ, tells Elijah to go give a, a message to the messengers of Ahaziah. And the message is, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? I mean, the God in heaven is obviously almighty. He's obviously proven himself through many signs and miracles. He proved himself back there with Elijah when he went against those false prophets. Yet Ahaziah never learned what not to do by watching his father. He walked in the ways of Ahab. He didn't forsake Baal. He didn't forsake false prophets. He walked in the sins of Jeroboam. And here is the message from Elijah, a doom and gloom straight to the point Hit you where it hurts message. It's much different than what the pro false prophets would say. 
This is what Elijah says to the messengers in verse 4. He says, Now therefore thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. You see, it's a doom and gloom message. That's what the Bible is. That's what a true preacher or teacher of the Bible would give you is doom and gloom messages. The Bible says it's appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. The Bible says, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. The Bible says, Hell hath enlarged itself. The Bible says, Hell is never full. The Bible says, They have no rest day nor night. The Bible is a very negative book. And if you truly give out the words of the Lord, it's going to be negative because man is in a mess. He's a sinner. He's hell bound without the Lord Jesus Christ. And most people are without the Lord Jesus Christ. So pretty much every other thing that's going to come out of your mouth is going to be a negative message. And the prophet of the Lord here says, Ahaziah will surely die. And it's the word of the Lord, so it's going to come to pass. Number three. What should, have, what should Ahaziah have learned from Ahab? He should have learned that he should listen to Elijah. Ahab never listened to Elijah. Ahaziah, like his father, just won't listen to Elijah the prophet. It says in verse 5, And when the messengers turned back unto him, he said unto them, Why are ye now turned back? And they said unto him, There came a man up to meet us. Notice, a man came up to meet us. Elijah was a real man. He was not just some sissy guy, some gender, gender queer, uh, non-binary or whatever they call it. This was a man that came up to meet him and said, Go, turn again unto the king that sent you and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord. So Elijah was speaking by the Lord here. Not his own words. Elijah, a true prophet, speaking by the Lord. Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that thou sendest to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. He's going to be bedridden until he dies. And he said unto them, What manner of man was he which came up to meet you and told you these things? words and they answered him he was an hairy man and girt about with a girdle of leather about his loins so elijah he hadn't been getting waxed he hadn't got all of his hair waxed he was a manly man's man he he, he was girt, girt with a girdle of leather about his loins and he and uh and he said it is elijah the tishbite Ahaziah lifted up out of that bed and said, It's Elijah. You see, he knew about Elijah. He knew his dad didn't listen to Elijah. Elijah is a hairy man, girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. Sounds a lot like John the Baptist. Ahaziah knew who Elijah was. He probably heard Ahab and Jezebel cuss the preacher every night at dinner time. He, uh, he probably heard... Ahab disrespect Micaiah because he hated him. He probably saw how his parents would listen to every man but the preacher. They would listen to CNN. They would listen to Fox News. They would listen to MTV News. They would listen to everybody else, Facebook News and everything else, but they would not listen to Elijah or Micaiah. They said, I hate him. He's crazy. He's a Bible-thumping conspiracy theorist. Uh, he's crazy. So Ahaziah can't learn what not to do. And he sends men after Elijah. In 2 Kings 1, 9, it says, Then the king sent unto him a captain of fifty with his fifty. And he went up to him, and behold, he sat on the top of an hill and spake unto him, Thou man of God, the king has said, Come down. You see, if someone can't find any uncleanness in you, they'll just try to bring you down. Bring you down to their level. They'll say, Come down. Just loosen up a little bit. Don't be such a prude. I've had people tell me that. You're just a prude. You're just a goody two-shoes. You're just trying to be holier than thou. Sometimes a lost man will try to make you mad just to make you cuss. They are basically saying, come down. Come on down. So these guys, these 50 guys, come to reproach, approach Elijah. 
And I guess Ahaziah heard what Elijah did to the 400 false prophets. He probably should have just sent all his men at once. I mean, notice they say, the king has said come down. So they had to put a little authority behind it as if, as if 50 men just wasn't enough to seem intimidating, you know. But it says, And Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy 50. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his 50. So Elijah just burnt those guys to a crisp. And Elijah is going to have a similar power to this in the tribulation in Revelation 11:5. It says, And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So Elijah's kill count is going up in the tribulation. I mean, he's done killed a few hundred people already uh, of these wicked people. And the kill count's going up in the book of Revelation. In 2 Kings 1, 11 through 12, it says, Again also he sent unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty. And he answered and said unto him, O man of God, thus hath the king said, Come down quickly. quickly. And Elijah answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. I mean, you would think Ahaziah would learn some lessons eventually. He just keeps doing the same thing over and over again, and it's not working. He just sent a captain of 50 with his 50. They got burned up. He sent another captain of 50 with his 50, and they get burned up. And Elijah's kill count just keeps getting up there pretty high. He's a prophet, but he's a killing as many bad guys as one of David's mighty men. And so, verse 13, And he sent again a captain of the third 50 with his 50. And the third captain of 50 went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these 50 thy servants be precious in thy sight. So finally, somebody with some sense, finally, somebody that can learn from the mistakes of people that went before them. That's what you need to do. Learn from the mistakes of people that have went before you. He says in verse 14, Behold, there came fire down from heaven and burned up the two captains of the former fifties with their fifties. Therefore, let my life now be precious in thy sight. So finally, somebody that can learn what not to do. He said, I know that the people that came before me, fire came down from heaven and burned up the two captains of the former fifties with their fifties. Look at the people that's gone on before you. Look at the people around you. Say, well, this person did meth, and, and their face is sunk in. They have no teeth. Their eyes are bugging out, and one of their eyes goes up in their head. The other one looks down at the ground. Maybe I should not do meth. You know, uh, this person got a DUI. This person crashed into an innocent person while driving because they were drunk driving and killed their mom, and now those kids have to ha not have a mom the rest of their life. Maybe I shouldn't drink alcohol. You know, look at the people around you, see how stupid they are, and then try your best not to be that stupid. I mean, it's that simple. Learn from people's mistakes. Learn what not to do. This guy, this captain of 50, he had some sense about him. He learned what not to do. Second Kings one fifteen and 16, And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, Go down with him, be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down with him unto the king. Notice how quickly Elijah listens to the Lord. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou hast sent messengers to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, is it not because there is no god of Israel? There is no god in Israel to inquire of his word. Therefore thou shalt not come down off that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. Notice that Elijah preached the same message. Some people like to say something against a, a preacher preaching the same sermon. But, I mean, it, if it's the word of the Lord, it's, it's still good. Elijah did it. He preached the same message more than once. It was short. It was sweet and to the point. Who's, I, I've heard preachers say, it's got to be an hour long. It needs to be an hour long sermon. And then I've heard them say, well, it just needs to be about 30 minutes. And then I've heard a lot of people say, if a man can't tell you something in 20 minutes, then uh, he's just repeating himself. I think none of those things are true. I just think go until it feels 
until you feel like you've done what, what the Lord would have you do, what the Lord would have you say. And that's all Elijah had to say. That's all the Lord gave him to say, so he was done. A couple sentences. Second Kings one seventeen. So he died according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah had spoken. It came to pass, just like everything in the Bible is going to come to pass, just as the Lord spoken. And Jehoram reigned in his stead in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. So Ahaziah died according to the word of the Lord. And if the Lord says it, that settles it. You can bank on it. It's going to come to pass. Verse 18. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah, which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So, that's King Ahaziah. He should have learned what not to do. So if you can't learn what to do from your father, if he's not going to show you the good and narrow way, the right way, then look at his life and learn what not to do. You know, they say experience is the best teacher. Not completely. The experience of others is the best teacher. I learned by the experience of people in my family not to make the same horrible decisions that they made. I learned from the people I went to school with I didn't have to experience the same thing that they did to, unlock, to know that they did the wrong thing. A lot of the people I went to school with, they're in jail or they're dead or they're on drugs and would be better off dead if they would get saved. But they probably wouldn't be better off dead because they're not saved. They would go to hell if they died. But I've learned what not to do by looking at the people around me. You can always learn something from somebody. You can learn something from anybody. Every man becomes your teacher, even if he can't teach you anything other than, other than what not to do. So look at the people around you. If they're wise, learn what to do from them. If they're not wise, learn what not to do. Don't be like Ahaziah.